Well, Razorback fans, Arkansas continues to add some new transfers, and this time it's a defensive back, which there's a lot of those. Why are there so many? We'll talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Thursday. So getting closer to the weekend and have some uh, Razorback baseball going down tonight against Vanderbilt. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about that and some of the news in baseball. But uh, I wanted to open up with a little bit of football news, which anytime that a new transfer or new commitment or recruit or whatever ends up pledging to Arkansas, I always feel like it's pretty significant news to, to, to dive into and to, to break down. And uh, yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, Arkansas got a pretty big time commitment and Keon Stewart. He is the former TCU cornerback and he entered into the portal from TCU. He had committed to Michigan State back on May 6th. But after wrapping up an official visit with Arkansas back on, I guess, yeah, I guess it was yesterday. Uh the Ron Wilson, the uh, secondary coach, got his commitment. So uh, he spent four seasons in TCU, recorded 46 tackles, one tackle for loss, one sack, 10 pass breakups, one interception, one forced fumble, and he entered the transfer portal back in January. He played in 13 games this past year, 14 tackles, three pass breakups, and one forced fumble as a junior, and he has two years of eligibility remaining. So he was on the team that uh, played in the national championship game and was part of that. And he was a three-star recruit coming out of high school. He had offers to Louisville, Utah, Texas Tech, Washington, and other schools now. Uh, Arkansas has 18 transfer commitments of the 2022 season, and they have two scholarships available for the upcoming year. Uh, I was at the uh, event, the Road One Razorback Road Show, I think is what it was called. Yeah, I was at that in Little Rock yesterday, and uh, Sam Pittman was there. And one of the things that he discussed as far as you know what, what they're going to be looking at for those uh, extra scholarships that they have available. He, he said, uh, you know, we're going to have probably a wide receiver or a center. They're just looking to add some depth. Not that they're not happy with who they have, but it's just about adding some depth into those positions that really could use it. And uh, they're going to try to go along with that. But as great as they've done, and I've mentioned this many times, and, and the job that Sam Pittman's done when it comes to adding in guys via the transfer portal and addressing needs and getting added depth into the, those important positions that is needed, it's been overwhelmingly defensive backs. Like the entire crew next year in the secondary is going to be just completely and totally different besides Dwight McLaughlin, Quincy McAdoo, uh, well, of course, when he gets back from injury, and then Hudson Clark. Pretty much everybody is going to be brand spanking new. And you see that, and it's like, wow, that's, that's quite the overhaul. But yet at the same time, I'm like, yeah, well, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> considering how bad the secondary was last year. But the amount of guys that they keep adding into the depth and, and, and trying to you know, put together some classes and some guys that can be able to help out and, and be able to help out that with that depth, it just kind of shows you that Arkansas and Sam Pimmon and the staff knows where the weaknesses are and are addressing those weaknesses and trying to put together at least enough players to where they can put out an SEC caliber defense. I talked about the defensive line and how I think they've upgraded tremendously across the board there. I think they've upgraded without question tremendously across the board from uh, what what Arkansas dealt with in the secondary too. Linebackers still up in the air. A few guys there that, you know, could be very helpful and be able to add some uh, some different additions there too. But I just, again, I, I keep saying it. I love the fact that they are going after guys that need to be going after. Like they are going after dudes that are defensive back guys that uh, can really try to slow down some of the passing games from some of these teams. So I think Arkansas's rush defense, I think the defensive line, especially with Deke Adams this past season, was actually really good. Uh, they were great with sacks. They got a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And we know how important that is. And the thing that always has been a game changer, too, is having great edge rushers to be able to, you know, get one of these, some of these athletic quarterbacks, these guys that can run around and everything get to the quarterback quick and try to make some moves there too. So there's just a lot of good things that are going on with Razorback defense, especially right now. And I think that with the expectations, because we'll talk about that in a question I was asked from 
uh, someone on Twitter to, to talk about on the podcast. When you talk about next season and the expectations, you know, we'll go to wins and losses and all that. But just talking about the defense themselves and the, the secondary players and who they've added in, as well as the defensive linemen, just everybody. Just looking at everybody who's on the team. How has it been added and how's it look and, and what are maybe some of the expectations that can come along with it? Well, I don't know if Arkansas is going to have a top five defense in the SEC, just to be honest, because Arkansas has not had a top five defense often at all since being in the SEC, especially in this new era of college football. They have had great offenses, elite offenses, sometimes the best offenses in the SEC, but when you counter that with the defense, so like best case scenario has always just been good, you know, good defense or above average defense. So that, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know if that's ever going to be the case at Arkansas, or I don't know if it's going to be the case this upcoming season, but it's certainly going to be upgraded in a way to where they're not going to be giving up as many big plays, big plays, safeties being out of position. Um, you know, like, it's one thing when you know you struggle with something because everybody's got a weakness. Even the best of teams have some little weakness to exploit. Now, sometimes those weaknesses can be a little bit easier to exploit, uh, and some of them are very much more difficult. But it was really unfortunate where the times that Arkansas had it going on, or at least were playing really well, was at the beginning of the season. You know, that Texas A&M game, we all know what happened and how it kind of changed the trajectory for a lot of reasons. But you beat Cincinnati who's a really good team. You beat South Carolina. It ended up being a, a decent team. Like You came back and beat Missouri State, which I know that was frustrating, but you still showed some toughness and came back and won the game. So when after that happened, though, and the depth started depleting because of the injuries, teams started saying, okay, when we plan for Arkansas, where's their weakness? Because that's what everybody does. And when the weakness was far and away the secondary and the pass defense Everyone was like, we're going to make them try to beat us that way. We're just going to, even if we're not a throwing team, we're going to throw the ball. We're going to challenge them. We're going to go over the top. We know that their safeties are, are, are not in the position. They know that they're not the athletes that can take on our wide receivers. So we're just going to go at them and see what happens. And that's what so many teams did. And even in some cases, Arkansas in the games they won, they gave up a lot of points or, or for whatever reason, and Arkansas was just able to score more than the other team. That's not a recipe for high-level success, and it's not a recipe to be having a great team and, and being able to go to some bowl game or uh, ha have a 10-win season, whatever it may be. That's not a recipe for it. But it was such a glaring, overwhelming weakness last year that no matter, even if you had a, a better team in all the other positions and, and across the board you had the edge, if your past defense was as bad as it was, then everybody was just going to beat you that way. And that was a very frustrating thing to see. And this year, Arkansas is going to have a weakness. Like, I think, again, everybody has a weakness. We can sit here and say, okay, well, what, the, what is the weakness going to be? Some people may say, oh, wide receiver, just because there's a lot of new guys that many people don't know about. Maybe uh, people will say, oh, it's linebacker or... Uh, oh, it's uh, the offensive line. You know, they're, they're gonna, people are going to bring up whatever they think is going to happen. But so we actually see it on the field, we won't know. But I feel so confident, and, and this is going back to my whole expectation for the, for the season and why I'm excited about it and, and the aspect of taking another step and getting back to being a really high-level SEC team is because the weaknesses that were so awful last season are significantly better and have changed and have improved dramatically. And the past defense was that. Again, I don't know if it's going to be top five in the SEC, but it ain't going to be dead last in college football. I know that. You've drastically improved at that position. And when you look at the other positions too and in the other aspects of the game, there's nothing that I can point to and say, oh, this for sure is going to be worse. There may be some things that are better, but just because of the additions that they've added and, and the culture that, that's been brought in and the, and the new fresh faces and the recruiting and, and all those things, I'm like, they've improved and upgraded across the board. So when that starts happening, the expectation, expectations start coming in and people start really feeling about it. But I might be starting to drink the Kool-Aid and talking with some of the uh, Arkansas people yesterday uh, at that event in Little Rock, have, I have a lot of reasons to believe it too. A lot of reasons to believe it. But we'll talk more about that bar, the low bar for Arkansas this upcoming season 
here in just a segment. Folks, I got to tell you about bird dogs. I, I've mentioned them before, but uh, the fit and comfort and versatility of these things are incredible. Like I, I kind of want to just order all of the different types of uh, clothing that they have because, again, it's so strange when you open up the package. You're like, oh, this looks small. This looks snug. This it doesn't look right. But as soon as you put them on, it's, it's wild because you're like, okay, not only do they look good and I can wear them at different events, but they also feel good. They fit good. I have the ability to move around a little bit. I'm not a little tied up there in certain areas that makes it uncomfortable or anything like that. They fit perfectly. And there's a reason why so many people are so big on these different items that they have to choose from. You got to do it yourself. So check them out right now at birddogs.com slash locked on college. You do that. You can see all the different items that they have available, and you can also enter, enter in promo code Locked On College. Simple as that, all one word, and you'll get a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler. Which hey, we could always use another tumbler, right? And theirs is high quality, and theirs is great, and uh, I appreciate them sending uh, that one to me as well. So no matter what it is, when it comes to the comfort, when it comes to the relief, when it comes to the fit, when it comes just to the overall style, you got to check it out. BirdDogs.com/slash Locked On College. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, this one actually came from uh, one of the people on Twitter, Matthew. So shout out to Matthew, because uh, again, I, I get a lot of requests for things to talk about in my podcast, which I welcome. I mean, it's not like I don't create my own content, so I don't want anyone thinking that, but also like to, you know, if I see a question or if I see a comment or something that somebody wants me to discuss on the podcast and I find it interesting, then yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely talk about it. So keep those coming too, if you ever have any questions about that too. Uh, but this one comes from Matthew. He says, hey, big question on my mind this offseason. Would love your answer on an episode of Locked on Razorbacks. What is your low bar this season for the football team? What would make you want to fire Sam Pittman or make his seat very hot for next season? For me, I don't want to see another six and six year for a while. Well, I thought that was a very interesting question and, and something to, I think, address when it comes to, to coaches and to, to Sam Pittman and the, the job that he's done so far. Because I, I want to be very clear. I am a huge Sam Pittman fan. I believe that he is the type of coach that you want to have success at Arkansas because he loves Arkansas. He loves the Razorbacks. He's not going to go anywhere. He's, he's just a good old boy that's so relatable and so much fun. And, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that you root for and everybody loves and roots for as well. So I want to make that clear that I'm a huge fan of his. But at the end of the day, you got to win. And he knows that, too. Every, every coach knows that. Like, you got to win. That's what you get paid a lot of money to do. And if you don't get the job done, people are going to start, you know, wanting you out of there. It's just the nature of the game. It's a performance-based business. And Sam Pittman is now entering into his fourth year. His first year, he went 3-7 and seven during the COVID year, which was wild. But because of how bad everything had been in uh, Chad Morris era, and then the fact that the SEC was so kind to go to an all-10 game SEC schedule and say, okay, Arkansas, here's Florida and Georgia, the two teams, best teams in the East. I'll just give you those. Like, knowing that, the fact that you went 3-7 and seven was pretty incredible. And then all these players being out because of COVID or whatever, you know, it, it was dumb. But still, he, he did some great things. And then went 9-4. and four, Best year Arkansas had had in a decade. Uh, and they were this close to even going and having a better record than what they did. You know, they, they lost to some games that, uh, they shouldn't have lost, and uh, you know there were some close calls and everything. But you know, if you think about the the, the four losses that they had in the, in the season, Alabama, of course, was a really close one. Uh, they they were at least giving them all they wanted on the road. You had Ole Miss, we know about that game, two point conversion away from winning it. Um, you know, you finally beat A and M, which was nice. You weren't going to beat Georgia because Georgia was just you know stupid good that year, being on the road and all that. Uh, so you weren't weren't going to be able to take care of business against that one. And Auburn was a frustrating one, too, because you shouldn't have lost it. But it, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you went eight and four and it was a great year. Nine and four overall with the bowl victory to cap it all off. And he took a step back this past season. There's no doubt. You go six and six. That was a very disappointing year. Should have been a nine and three year. Maybe even ten and two if you played your cards right. Like you you were in position to really take that next step. And for a lot of different reasons, it was blown. So now comes this year. And I've said many times before, I believe this year is going to be so much better. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. That's fine. But I think that the additions they've made on the team, the coaching changes they've made, the people they have returning, like everything involved, plus the schedule, still think the schedule's easier. Uh, to me, that's going to be 
what drives this season to be a much more successful one than this past year. That being said, we know things happen. You know, expectations are just that. Expectations. Doesn't mean it's reality. So if this was a year to where I was being asked, of course, by Matthew, and I'm sure a lot of people have been asking it itself, what's the low bar? What's the bar that gets Sam Pittman fired or at least him on the hot seat? Well, to me, if Arkansas does not make it to a bowl game this year, if they go five and seven, we'll say, uh, I think that changes need to be made. If, if they go four and eight, five and seven, something like that, they don't make it to a bowl game, they finish last in the SEC West, something like that, I believe changes will need to be made because after four years, you had a losing record and then you had a great year, but then you took a significant step back the next year and then even a more step back the next year. You're not going in the right direction. The directory is not there. To me, that's what would take to get Sam Pittman fired after this season. But if Arkansas goes six and six, Sam Pittman doesn't need to be fired. Because you may know the bowl game, seven and six, whatever. But just talking about regular season, six and six, he doesn't need to be fired. But I think his seat needs to be turned up to the highest thing where it's like you win or get out next year. And when I say win, I'm talking about huge strides, eight, nine, 10 win season. The next year, you do it, you don't do it, you're out of here. Simple as that. I would say, Seven and five would be okay. You know, not, not like something that's just exciting and everything, but I think seven and five would be like the way of like, okay, he's still, we're still all right. We took, we won another game compared to last year. You know, you won one more. Uh, maybe you, you know, went four and four in a SEC play or something like that. You know, it would depend on who you beat and who you lost to and all that thing and how the team looked and how they finished everything. But, you know, if you went seven and five, but some of those wins are at least against, you know, A&M that you finally beat and you know, Missouri, you know, teams that you've struggled against and finally get those wins. And I think maybe people could be a little bit more lee, give you a little bit more leeway. So that one's kind of the, the interesting one. Eight and four is a great year. Oh, I say, say great. It's a good year. It's a good year where, OK, you did a great job. You, you, won, you went four and four in SEC play, maybe uh, you, you took to, you know, the strides to get better. The recruiting class is coming in. You know, there's a lot of reasons to believe that next year will be even better. That's where it's at. Nine and three is incredible. And anything above that, just sign the man to a raise and extension and all that stuff. So if, I, if I'm looking at the lowest bar, if he doesn't make a bowl game, he needs to go. If he goes six and six, the, the, the heat needs to be turned up to an 11 for the next year. So that's how I look at it. And you can disagree. That's fine. And again, I want to make sure everyone knows I'm a huge Sam Pittman fan. I want him to succeed. Really, really badly. And I think that he will this year. I, I really do. But just for the sake of conversation, that's kind of what I look at as far as the low bar for the Arkansas football team this upcoming year. Uh, we'll talk about some sad news on the other side of the break dealing with the Razorback baseball team. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned here on Out of Bounds. Out of Bounds. Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Sometimes when you do both a radio show and a podcast, it kind of bleeds over. The Locked on Razorbacks podcast, of course, next. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Sad news, man. I hate this. My guy, Peyton Stovall. He, uh, he's a second baseman for Arkansas, and of course, we know how highly regarded he was coming out of high school. Uh, he was officially announced yesterday by Dave Van Horn that he has a torn labrum. And he will be out for the rest of the season because it's requiring surgery. It's going to happen here in the next 10 days. Uh, Van Horn says it's not huge, but it needs to be fixed. I'm glad we know what it is and he can get it fixed and he can move on. I think he'll have a great, great season next year. And uh, Stovall just kept saying that it kept bothering me. Uh, I'd go out there a Friday and feel decent. By and by Sunday, my shoulder would start to hurt so bad I could hardly throw. And it bothered me to really take any swings. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was some sad news to see. With uh, the amount of season-ending injuries that have happened, he's the fourth player to suffer that with Jackson Wiggins, Dylan Carter, both going Tommy Johns, and then Cody Frank uh, going with a surgery on his torn lat muscle. And, uh, you know, Peyton Holt's going to be the guy that steps into the place of Peyton Stovall, two Peytons always at second base. But I, I just hated this, man, because I, I, I really like Stovall. And those that you listen to my radio show, you know that he's a guy that comes on my radio show every week and, and has for the past couple seasons. He's always good to talk to. He's 
very well spoken and you know he he had a great end of the year last year too there's a very high expectation that was put on him but once he settled in and got it going uh he really turned it on and then uh you know this year he, he had moments where he's really good but you could tell he was struggling with with that hurt shoulder and so uh the fact that they figured it out and they know that it's going to be good to go uh is great and i actually talked to him about it. he said that he believes that it happened during the Alabama game is what they think. He says he was only really healthy for a couple of SEC series with Auburn and LSU being those this year. So it, it was something he struggled with. It was something that was really tough to, to deal with and tough to, to look at. But either way, it's, it's going to be all right because he's a guy that obviously is going to come back next year and uh, is a really good player for Arkansas. And I'm sure that he's so happy to uh, know what it was and know what the problem was and be able to fix it. And so they can move on and be able to, to take that next step. So. Uh, thoughts and prayers though with Stovey and getting back to back to normal and getting that surgery done and hopefully he's able to to come back better than ever next season because I know it's killing him not being able to be out there but uh, he's got a great team around him that's going to help him out and uh, he'll be able to you know be able to lead from the dugout and be able to be that type of role player that uh, you can be whenever you're dealing with injury and everything like that so uh, speedy recovery stove we're rooting for you appreciate everybody listening in to locked on rage rex podcast be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on itunes or on google play you can also get after me on twitter at buzz john neighbors for any questions comments concerns that you may have we'll keep it going from there same podcast time same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon have a great day everybody we'll see you then